Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of Pints with Air. I'm Brent Hefley. I'm the Sales and Marketing Director for Air Acoustics. And I'm here with Ryan Berry, our CEO and expert technician. And as always, Ariel Brown, our VP and Senior Engineer. Cheers, guys. Cheers. All right. All right. How's, how is it there in Colorado today? Well, it's uh, not snowing and it's not 91, so. Awesome. We've had about a quarter mile. As far as weather goes, it's very moderate. We've had about a quarter mile of visibility here in uh, Eugene all week long because of the smoke. So yeah, our smoke is still there. I mean, the fires are scary, and you know, I hope everybody's staying safe. Of course. Yeah, absolutely. It's it can be crazy stuff out there. Yeah. So um, today, what have you got? Is gotten your glasses? I want a Colorado Staples for I I Ryan. I think they've been Ooh. doing this for. Our, couple decades as far as i know so odell brewing before yeah Collins, yeah quite a while. Meat. so one of been my you know like restaurant go-to's for a long time very yep. nice very nice yeah those guys make some great great beers for sure i went with a local favorite today uh ninkasi brewing oh yeah they make a prismatic so i've shifted from my remember the old school label discussion we've had so this is mm -hmm. definitely not old school label. <laughs> this no. is their, their colorful new school, <laughs> prismatic, juicy IPA. So, and to give Odell the proper credit, they were founded in 1989. So. Oh, nice. There you go. Nice. I'll have to look up and see when Nankasi was founded. It's been around for a while, but probably not quite that long. Although it might be an error. We will <laughs> see. Uh, great. Well, thanks for everyone joining us out there. Um, today we are going to uh, go over a topic that I get a lot of questions on um, and one that uh, we could definitely do a better job of describing. And that is what the heck is our diamond circuit? Um, Made of pure diamonds. Pure diamonds, <laughs> not blood diamonds. These are like just manufactured diamonds, nothing. That's right. <laughs> um, no, there's no diamonds in the circuit. It's <laughs> no more of the topography. <laughs> uh, yeah, as uh, contrary to popular belief, no diamonds. Um, so for the first, what, 16 years of air, 15 years of air, we used a uh, kind of a standard circuit, output circuit. Um, and uh, I'll let you talk a little bit about that in a second, Ariel. And then we, we've we looked at the circuit design, you and Charlie, and decided to switch. So maybe it's good to have a little history on what we used to use and then what what uh, propagated our change over to this new diamond stage. Sure, so yeah, for the first 15, 20 years of air, you know, at least for, um, for the power amplifiers, um, you know, our, our very first generation of amplifiers, like the V3 and V1, they actually use MOSFET output stage. So that's, uh -huh. a, that's a, a totally different beast I'm not really going to get into. But um, uh, for that, we switched to kind of a pretty typical triple emitter follower complementary output stage. Again, bridged, you know, balanced um, output stage. Um, and um, it and, and that, you know, we're able to use that very effectively um, uh, with zero feedback um, and in a balanced configuration. Uh, pioneered by Sankin and or JBL for, for you know, several decades ago. And um, it's a real, it's a very, you know, pretty simple circuit, but it, um, it allows for um, the, the, the cascading current gain that you need to be able to drive, um, you know, you, you, I, 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 to actually provide the current that, that a speaker might need um, and, and, and be able to isolate your voltage gain stage from the actual speaker load. Um, and so um, it's, it's just a uh, simple and tried and true stable design. Uh -huh. uh, for, for like our preamps or any of our sources, like a DAC or something, uh, we do typically just use uh, a, a simple single stage emitter follower. Um, output or, or even a, a JFET buffer uh, for some of our earlier designs. Right. Um, so, you know, um, when Charlie and I started, you know, Charlie, you know, was always, always digging up, 
historical circuits and thinking about uh, you know why things sound good and, right. and, and ways to tweak things. And so he 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 you know he he had um, he had known about the, the diamond buffer. I mean, it's been used in various other audio products. It's not uh, we're certainly not the first ones to use it. Uh -huh. um, you know, for 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 quite a while, and it has its you know its benefits there. It, yeah, um, it was used, it wasn't it used in uh, in chips primarily because of the heat that it produces. It was used in smaller uh, current situations. Yeah, I mean, it, it, um, um, it, it is often used as like the output stage of what op amp sometimes or various other various other uh -huh. um, integrated circuits where, and, and where it's easier to to use there where, where it is a, a, a fairly low power situation. Yeah, um, so the, the diamond circuit, you know, that was founded in the 60s. And uh, I think Richard Baker at MIT founded that circuit. Yep. And at the time patented it as a uh, gateable bridge network having power gain. And uh, it's used, um, even today, it's, it's often used in places where, um, where you have uh, buffer ICs with unity voltage gain, but a burst current to drive a load. Like with pack chips, for example. Yeah. So and so, you, you know, Charlie wanted to start. Charlie, um, I, I don't remember the exact impetus, but um, we um, uh, he wanted to try it and listen to it, and you because know, it's uh, one of its features is that it has you know a single a single point input and a single point output, whereas um, right. whereas like a triple and middle follower, you have to have a splitting stage, and so I mean. And so you can consider the, the front half of a diamond um, to be the splitting stage. But um, if you look at, um, first off, why it's called a diamond. And if, if you go back to the original patent drawings, you'll see that the way it was drawn, which is not the way you would normally draw a modern schematic, but if you align the transistors right, they, they you know, it looks more like, you know, the diamond, uh, more, more, you know, you know um, like a, a, a square, rotated 40, 45 degrees sitting on one of its points, you know, kind of a kite. So that's why it's, that's how it's got its diamond name. Right. It's just Mar that. The marketing department took care Four of that. Four seconds, yes. Yes. And it's, uh, you know, it's, you know, essentially, a, a, you know, a pair of, you know, splitting emitter followers and, and a recombination, recombination emitter followers is the way I call it. Yep. Um, All with no intervening circuitry that needs to combine everything, right? Yeah, interesting. So, does it? It sounds like it probably has less parts involved than a traditional triple triple emitter follower stage, or is that not necessarily the case? Um, not necessarily the case. I mean, again, you, you know, you know, just the, you, you know, you know, stripped down to its raw elements, just of just the transistors and the absolutely necessary resistors. You know, this will require ultimately just four transistors and a triple emitter follower by itself requires six transistors. Okay. Um, with the emitter, with the triple emitter follower, you know each each stage of followers can be needs to be bigger and bigger um, parts. Uh, in the in in the diamond, you really want all four to be th uh, the same size. Okay. So it's compromised there as far as um, you know um, power and size of each of each part. Um, now, you know you know again. It, what what how how you use the circuit is 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 still ninety percent of 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 um, what you actually get out of it. And sure, just sure. just the raw diamond circuit itself performs fine, but but to actually get the real magic that we get out of it, you have to know how to use it and how and you know where to where to. Never quite that it. simple. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, and so. Um, yeah, so go back to you know how we started. We we uh, we I don't remember what product we stuck it into. I know we started primarily in the so I know the KXR or the KX5, one of the preamps in the first place we started the KXR. playing with it. <clears throat> yeah, um, yeah, and so um, uh, yeah, when we're working on the on on the on the twenty upgrade on the 20 revision and um uh that's where we started playing with it and it it was it was um 
it was kind of a revel. Um, it was it was a bit of a bit of a, um, a revelation in you know what it did to the sound quality. Um, yeah. And, you know, and you know, technically, why it sounds better, you know, um, Charlie already said that. You know, well, the, don't really know why. One of those uh, irrational but efficacious things. <laughs> right. And um, you yeah. Know, he, I'll actually never forget when I heard it the first time because <clears throat> I, you guys had, had done it and you sent the prototype to Tokyo for the show and I traveled to Tokyo and I hadn't heard it yet. And we were, we were setting up the show and they were putting the system together on one side of the room. Uh, the guys from Axis who are awesome, awesome guys. Hi guys, if you're watching. Um, I was over setting up our, our static display and they turned the system on and I just went like, what is that? It was amazing, the yep. difference. Like, you know, just right during setup, you could just hear this clarity that came through. And I was like, oh my God, that thing is insane. Um, <laughs> so yeah, when you're, you're set, the sound difference was pretty staggering. Uh, it's fun when we get to impress the sales guys. Yeah, that was super fun. I love those surprises. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, now I think, um, now, to be totally honest, I think we uh, the first time we actually did it was in the KX5. Um, we had a version of it, and it wasn't the, uh, the non twenty KX5. It actually had um, it actually had uh, a diamond output stage. Oh right. Um, it wasn't, you know, Didn't honestly, it wasn't right. fully fleshed out yet. And so the twenty upgrade and even some of the the, the intermediate upgrades um, 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 uh, definitely address some of the some of the things that we quickly learned about that diamond output stage. Didn't the original um, AX5 have some diamond in it? That the original AX5 was was a true diamond output power stage. Well, the, the AX5 came out before the KX5. Yes, you're right. You're absolutely right. So, so the AX5 was the impetus to everything. Yes, it was. And, and, and that was a very unique beast. And we learned a lot with that, um, good and bad. <laughs> yeah, we learned that, you know, on the output devices, it definitely generates a lot of heat. And so heat management becomes right. Right. quite a challenge. Right. And not just the output devices, the actual, the actual front end driver transistors within that circuit. You know, mm -hmm. I, you know, I'm, 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 uh, because they have to be the same size and be essentially running the same bias current, um, it was a huge increase in power dissipation, which is why it's not a popular circuit, because right. it is not power efficient. Not efficient at all, but it sounds really good. Right, which may be part of the reason why it sounds good because you know, you know, it does need to be biased up. The front end stage and the, and the output stage within that circuit needs to be biased up pretty high. Yep. Um, but so, and, but then that, that um, you know, with, with the issues of that full diamond output stage, that, that, you know, that pushed us to develop what, what became the double diamond output stage, which is, kind of a mix between um it, it 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 takes a step back towards the triple emitter follower so okay. that it's um although uh where it uses two diamond buffers to replace some of the some of the, the emitter follower stages and then it uses um and then it's essentially two diamonds within a diamond i don't want to describe it in too much detail here, but um, it there's uh, there are several stages occurring, and even more so than than would be in in a triple emitter follower. So it's, so it really heavily isolates the voltage gain stage from from the actual output. Yep. Right, right. Yeah, and one of the beauties about the diamond circuit is is in the sense that you know people ask well, why does it sound the way it does and why is it good and. Like Charlie said, you know, we don't know entirely for sure. It's it just does, you know, and that's 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 kind of the beauty about this this whole design aspect of you know circuit design. There's there's times where you just run into this. If we had all the answers and we knew exactly why everything sounded better or worse, we'd make the perfect amplifiers and everybody make the same thing as it stands. You know, I think the only other power amplifier I know of that uses a diamond circuit like this would be like the original Dart Zeal amplifier, and uh, you know, we do things obviously different than they did, 
Um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's cool because you have every company with, you know, a different outlook on how to do things. Right. And that's where we get this, you know, this beauty in this industry where, you know, each, each player gets to present their take on things and we're not all making the exact same product every day. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. So I know there's going to be questions that people are, are thinking through as they're watching this. And, and one that we get asked fairly often is, you know, how are these, uh, class A, class AB designs, how much of it's class A. So mm. you know, what we what we build are class AB designs. Basically. Power amplifiers, yes. Power amplifiers, right. Yes. Um, because, I, yeah, so that's a good point because this stage is used in the preamplifiers for the outputs as well. So yep. it's not just a power amp mm -hmm. stage. So, but for clarity in terms of the amplifier, you know, I know we'll get the question is, is, this, is that a class A circuit? class a b how much and and uh yeah do you want to address that a little bit yeah sure um yeah so it's a so it's still a class a b output stage um and 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 the final output devices are still you know you know is, is still paralleled uh complementary uh push pull bipolar transistors um and so that doesn't change um um, um very much within this double diamond circuit. Um, so, you know, on the order of uh, staying in class A up to roughly five watts, uh -huh. um, it would take um, based on our, our typical biases. Um, you, you know, when you're using bipolar output devices, there's kind of a sweet spot as far as bias. <laughs> right, uh, turning it up more doesn't necessarily make them sound better. Correct. Yeah. Uh, um, and, and, and so that's really what, and, and, and that's really what will define um, 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 and when it will leave class A. Now you can, you can then parallel, you know, more and more and more devices and that will get you further and further in class A, but there's, you know, many other costs to just, you know, adding more transistors is size and sure. power supply and you name it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And <clears throat> realistically most of the time you're below five watts anyway when you're listening to most yeah music. when you're listening to music typically even at even at surprisingly loud levels you're really only using you know you know rarely much more than a watt or a few or a yeah. couple it's, yeah absolutely excuse me. absolutely um what about drive driving speakers we get that that question fairly often and i'm sure it'll pop into people's mind with this is how does that diamond stage compare to <clears throat> triple emitter follower stage for driving difficult loads. Um, is there a difference? Uh, and, and as far as, as far as like our, our 20 version double diamond to our previous uh, triple emitter, it's uh, there, there, there's no real, real difference in its ability to drive driver speaker. It still has very similar or, or even the same um, uh, output impedance or damping, damping factor. There's still zero feedback. Uh, it's still, um, um, fully stable to capacitive loads, so it's really not any different there. Uh -huh. um, and but so, um, um, but with our parallel de parallel devices and with our you know three or four stages of current gain, which which is what which is what isolates the 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 voltage gain point, um, it's um, it it can drive extremely low low impedance loads, extremely low impedance speakers um, 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 without. Without affecting the amplifier stability or, or its distortion or or, uh, or ability to drive that, it's got very very high, you know, um, uh, 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 current delivery capacity. Uh huh. So, and that's true. It, it does too. We we try to pretty exhaustively test every type of load that we can think of here with any new designs. You know, it's a lot of work to make sure that. You know, it's going to make work with a 20 foot cable or a 30 foot cable, or in some cases, you know, we I just got off the phone with a customer and he was running a 65 foot cable to his to his amps from his preamp. So you know, it's wow. and then you know another another 35 to his speakers because he wants to go from one room to another to another, and you know, so you get all kinds of configurations. So making sure that the product can support those is is really important and support all the other products that are out there from, you know, the various cable companies. Sure. <clears throat> sure. And, and the speaker loads and, and, uh, 
and that's true with all the products. So even this, yeah, because even it's a small goal of ours that we want, we want all of our all of our equipment to just be plug in and enjoy the music. We don't want mm -hmm. to have a situation where somebody spends all this time trying to configure everything and then they get it all hooked up and then the first thing that happens is it doesn't work. You know, that's not a good experience for anybody. So you know, <laughs> anything that that we can do to you know <laughs> make this you know, an enjoyable experience for them and they're not cursing out the money that they spent and, the, and you know, looking disdainfully at their room that they can't listen to music at and, you know, then, uh, you know, we, we try to do that. <laughs> yep, those are good. Now, an interesting thing about the Diamond Circuit um, is, uh, you know, when, when Charlie passed, we, we were approached by Charlie's former roommate in college. Uh-huh. And uh, he said, you know, hey, I have some old circuit designs that uh, Charlie had done years ago uh, when we were roommates and I was wondering if you would like to have them and absolutely of course we wanted to have those so you know we said you know absolutely you know if you have those that'd be great and he had them in his card and so he handed them to us on the spot and uh, Ariel took those and looked at them and the funny thing was is they were kind of a rudimentary you know diamond design from yeah, wow. uh, way back when he was in college yeah so it, it's kind of funny because, you know, Charlie started way before he made air. He started looking into this and thinking about this idea and, you know, the culmination of his life's work ended up making that idea, you know, come to life. And I think that was a really cool story for Charlie. Yeah, that is, that is super cool. That is super cool. I had no idea that it went back that far with him. Yeah. You know, yeah. We, we didn't either. I don't think he even yeah. did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. Right. All right. Well, that's that's a great description. Is there anything else we want to talk about on the diamond output stage? We use it. Uh, we, use it we use it for the amplifier outputs, the preamplifier outputs, the headphone outputs. Mm -hmm. Are yeah. driven by that. Yeah, you know, use you know you know the basic diamond buffer for any of the low power outputs, any of the preamplifiers, uh, or, or even just a, a just a headphone uh, output stage. Uh, and again, the power amplifiers we use what we call the double diamond. Right. Uh, to be able to handle, you know, that extra power um, uh, 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 to be able to handle the efficiency problem of just a single, a single diamond output stage, we, we, we develop that double diamond. And, and, and this whole circuit, you know, that we've, you know, that we've taken the, the very basic diamond buffer idea and we, you know, we have our own twists on it and tweaks to make it sound the way we want it. It also very, very heavily relies on, 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 on well-designed and pr pretty well-matched and thermally coupled transistors. Ah, uh -huh. And so you can't just slap them on board again. You have to think it's, it, a lot of this relies on very careful, even circuit board layout again to get the transistors thermally coupled so that, so that you don't have runaway DC offsets and um, um, many other issues. Right, <laughs> right, yeah. It's living on the high performance edge right there. Yeah. I love it. Cool. Well, thank you, everyone. Thanks, everybody out there. Hope you enjoyed your pints with us this time and Diamond Output Stage Talk. If you have any questions about this or you have thoughts on what we should cover in the future, email us at pints at air.com. And until next time, cheers. 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 <laughs>